All right, so I am Paul Marlin. I'm one of the counselors here. I work with students' last names M through Z. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm Christine Meeks. I am the other counselor here. I work with students with the last names A through L. So today we're gonna go over what is PSEO. Um, we're gonna play good cop, bad cop. So I'm gonna go over all the things that are, that are you have to watch out for, any, any negative parts about PSEO. And then Ms. Meeks is gonna talk about the benefits and then she's gonna talk about um, all the steps you need to do um, in order to, to uh, take PSEO courses. Um, all this information we're gonna talk about, it's gonna be on our counseling page website. So uh, if you just go to our school website under counseling center, we have all the resources. These documents will be there. Um, so if you ever want to refer back to things, it's all going to be posted online. Okay, so what is PSEO? PSEO stands for Post-Secondary Enrollment Option. Um, it's the opportunity to obtain college and high school credit at the same time. It is different than some of the college courses we offer in our school, like our CIS courses. Those are concurrent enrollment classes seem very similar, but concurrent enrollment means that you are taking the class through our high school and generally being taught by one of our teachers. PSEO means that you are not affiliated with our school when you're taking that class. Uh, we will talk about that a little bit later. You still get the high school credit, but we do not have any part in you taking the class other than getting, helping you get signed up for it. Um, you still, even if you do full-time PSEO, you still have to make sure that you get your required courses in for high school diploma. Uh, full-time PSEO takes that you meet, or means that you take absolutely no courses here, zero courses. Um, you're taking all of your courses through the college. If you are a part-time PSEO student, it means that you're taking anywhere from one to five-ish courses here, sometimes six. Um, sometimes people will say, I'm a full-time PSEO student, except I take band here. You're still part-time PSEO. Um, if you're taking one course, at least one course here at the school, it doesn't make much of a difference. It's just, uh, making sure that you get your requirements taken care of and all of that. All right. Generally to qualify for PSEO as a senior, you should have that what they look at is uh, 21 on the ACT. If you haven't eight, taken the ACT, then they look at some other factors. Um, be in the top half of your class, have a GPA of 3.0 or higher. And for juniors, 24 on the ACT, the top third of the class or 3.4 GPA or higher. Sophomores can do PSEO, but they will not be able to take any required courses through PSEO. It's only career and technical education courses, and that's only one class a semester. It's kind of confusing. We have trimesters here at the high school, but colleges have semesters. So they've got two, for parents who went to college, you should know, they've got two grading periods in the year. So for sophomores, you're looking at eighth grade MCA scores. And uh, if you were a sophomore and COVID prevented you from taking it, then we can help you individually with figuring that out. Um, it is generally, it can be difficult to get into PSEO. So you need to make sure that you have um, a good academic standing. Okay, so the pros of PSEO, um, the college credit is guaranteed unless you fail the class he talks about that. Um, so you, you save money because it's a course that you don't have to take at your next college as long as the course transfers. There are more course options. College can offer many more courses than a high school can. Uh, some classes aren't open to PSEO students, especially some of the upper level ones, but there are a lot more intro classes to take especially if you're interested in checking and maybe majoring or having a career in something that we don't have a class for here at school. So that's a really good option for PSEO students. Uh, we pay our school pays actually to take your PSEO classes or for you to take them. Also, your books are covered through that. There might be a couple fees. Uh, if you're in a lab science class, you might have to pay a small fee, um, but overall, the experience is free. It is rigorous. We 
I had quite a few students this year who are struggling after the uh, the year that was COVID um, because it's a lot to get back into after having a year of just kind of some crazy courses and a crazy school year. So if you're looking to challenge yourself as a student or you know as a parent that your student is bored in class, they need something that's tougher to do, uh, that is PSEO. And as you might know as a parent, sometimes a PSEO or a college class will have its grade will be based on two tests. So um, instead of, you know, homework assignments and being able to make things up. So that is a great experience to start to get ready for being a college student and being on your own. As Mr. Marlin will say, we don't have any access to how you're doing in the class. We do not have access to your grade. Your parents do not have access to your grades. They cannot talk to your professors because even if you're under the age of 18 at college, they have strict confidentiality rules for college students, which is part of the, you know, having to be mature enough to, to do that. See if I missed anything. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go over uh, just some potential issues and then things to consider as you're looking at PSEO classes. Um, I am going to go into a lot more of the negative stuff just because this year, like Ms. Meek said, we've had more students struggling um, than we have in the past. Um, and we just want to make sure, you know, part of it's COVID, right? That's affected all of us um, in different ways. But we want to make sure that we're, you know what you're getting yourself into, okay? So once you start PSEO courses, that starts your college transcript that's going to follow you forever, right? Um, if they get rid of me here at the school, hopefully never. Um, but if I do, I'm applying for jobs. They don't care what my high school transcript looks like, but I still have to submit my college transcripts when I'm applying. Okay. Um, so it starts your college transcript, which can be great if you start rocking it because then you have an awesome GPA in college. Um, but if you start struggling, that can affect your financial aid or your academic eligibility if you start failing classes. Okay. Um, so not trying to scare you, but making sure we're, we're being real with it. Um, scheduling priorities. If you have a job, if you're, you're balancing a lot of stuff, um, with, with, uh, extracurricular activities and stuff like that, making sure that you can handle it. Um, if we have an away game, uh, for basketball and you don't get back until 11 o'clock midnight and your papers do, the college isn't going to say, we understand you had an away game. You can turn it in late. Our high school does that kind of stuff, right? We understand that things happen and, you know, we might have pep rallies, might have different things of big things going on, or we might not have school. Colleges say, this is our timeline. You have to stick to it. Okay. Um, so just knowing that it, it really is up to the, what the college has to say about all that kind of stuff. So what you can handle, um, like I said, your GPA and your credits, um, that does impact your high school um, GPA and, and graduation. Um, but that also will impact you for college, okay? Um, so that's an important thing um, to think about. We'll talk about in the next slide how classes transfer, like how a college class counts for a high school uh, credit, and then kind of what classes count, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, transferring to college, um, just because you take a class at, say, Riverland doesn't mean it's necessarily, if you decide you're going to go to MSU or somewhere else, doesn't mean it's going to be a perfect transfer, Okay, um, so what we would recommend, um, I have an example uh, website, it's called Transferology. You go to Transferology, you can put in the class you're taking at, say, Riverland, and then you can say, if I wanted to transfer to another school, and it'll tell you how it's going to transfer. Is it perfect? It's not going to be 100% perfect, but it will give you an idea of how class will transfer, because you don't want to take a whole ton of classes through PSEO, be excited you're going to save all this money, and then realize, oh, wait, none of this transfers how I wanted to transfer, okay? That'd be an awful feeling, okay? So making sure you're doing your research um, when you're looking at um, transferring classes, confidential, confidentiality, like Ms. Meek said, we don't know how you're doing in class. If you drop the class and you don't let us know, we don't always even know that, okay? Um, so it is all on the student. If you need help advocating for yourself, we can sit down with you and say, okay, you're going to write an email to your professor. We will help you, but that's going to be you and your professor having that kind of relationship, okay? Um, this year, we've had a spike in students wanting to drop and withdraw from classes. And just want to make sure that everyone understands that is a big deal. 
Um, if you decide you want to drop or withdraw a class, that goes on your college transcript if you miss the drop date. So it goes on there as a W, does not affect your GPA. However, that's just a little flag on your transcript. Um, it's like an oops, okay? It's not the greatest. If you have too many of those, or let's say you withdraw from the first class you take and you don't have other PSEO classes to balance out your college transcript, that can affect your academic and financial eligibility in college, okay? You might be putting on like probation, uh, it might prevent you from taking further classes through PSEO. Um, so dropping withdrawing from a class is gonna be your last resort, okay? We can help you troubleshoot and problem solve but it's going to be huge that we stay on top of things. Two really quick things. Yep. Um, also, we pay for PSEO classes. Our school district does, which means the taxpayers do. Um, we have had quite a few students dropping out of classes and getting Ws. We still put the bill. So I know that that doesn't directly affect families, but it does overall in terms of the fact that we're still paying for these classes. Our school is that students aren't going to be getting credit for if they withdraw. One other thing, we can't answer transfer questions if because we don't know there's hundreds of classes at hundreds of colleges. And so I can't tell you, oh yeah, Composition 1 from MSU transfers to this credit at the U. That's some of the research uh, you would need to do through Transferology or calling the school that you're interested in to go to eventually and seeing if they will take that credit. And if you're lost, I'm like, I don't even know where to start. So I had a student in my office, she didn't even know how to start on how to figure out what classes to take, how they're gonna transfer. So I sat down with her and I kind of walked her through, these are the steps you need to do to like, how to contact the college, how to do all those things. She went ahead and did that, but I kind of walked her through and got her started. So we're happy to help mm -hmm. you with that kind of stuff, um, but it's gonna be, the onus is gonna be on the student and the family to do that, okay? Um, all right, let's take a break from the bad and sad and <laughs> negative news. Um, when we're looking at transferring PSEO courses to high school credit, if you take a four credit class, that's going to be equivalent to a full year class here at our school. Okay. So some students choose to do like Langlet 11 or Langlet 12. They want to do an English composition class instead. Okay. If they take a four credit class, you'll see that it transfers over as a three credit high school course. Um, and then that fulfills your entire year. So you could do one PSEO class and get a full year of a core class completed, okay? Things to note is some schools like Riverland, they have a lot of three credit classes. So if you do a three credit class, that transfers as 2.25 credit. So then a student then has to take another one credit class to get the other 0.75 credit, okay? Or more, or more, sure. So just being aware of, it's just not, hey, if it's a comp class, it's gonna transfer or something like that. Knowing how many credits you need. On our school website, as I said, we have everything on there. We have a course equivalency guide that we started up um, last year. That did not bring us to the document I had. <laughs> okay, um, course equivalency. So it'll tell you generically, right? If you're looking at classes. So if you're looking at taking a Langlet class, these are generally the classes that, co the tra that count, okay? Or a government class, these are generally the classes that count, okay? This will help you when you're registering, looking for things, because there are some stuff that, that we want to make sure that whatever you're learning in college is comparable to what we're learning in high school, because you have to make sure to fulfill the high school requirements, okay? So this is just an easy guide to help you out, um, when you register and stuff like that, after you register, Miss Meets will talk about um, all that kind of stuff after you officially register and how you check it with us. But this is a good starting off spot. Okay. All right. Now let's back to some more bad news or things to consider. All right. Um, so um, things to consider is what do you want to do after high school? Okay. If you're thinking that you want to go straight into the workforce or say you want to do construction or something, is PSEO really gonna help you out, right? If you don't have to take an equivalent course in college, okay, unless you just wanna push yourself and challenge yourself more, is PSEO really gonna help you out, okay? Um, is it the right option for you? Can you learn online? Do you need to be taught? If you need to be taught in person, 
then can you make it fit in your busy schedule to go to a campus? I was not prepared to take PSEO classes when I was in high school, okay? I'm not that kind of learner where I just, I just sit and read and all of a sudden I'm super smart. I need to hear people talk and I need to listen to it. And then through that, I learn a lot better, but I was not ready for it. So just knowing what kind of learner you are, we have some students who are full-time PSEO, they love it and they're wildly successful, okay? But I know in high school, I would have drowned and I would not have done well. So just knowing the kind of person you are, um, whether you want to do part-time or full-time, some students are just re ready to be done with high school and all right, be done and you just do college, okay? Um, some students still want to be part of the high school experience, okay? So knowing how much you want to be part of school, um, knowing your responsibilities and what you can handle, okay? If you have a job, if you're in sports, if you have to take care of a lot of stuff at home, okay, can you handle that? What are your other responsibilities? If you want to go to campus, do you have transportation to drive to Mankato or Otana? What's that like in the winter? Do your parents have a, want you to be driving in the winter when there's snowstorms and stuff you have to deal with? So what are some of the other things you need to make sure you're taking um, into account when you're looking at PSEO courses? Um, the, one of the biggest things we have, we have to tell you is make, if you start struggling, you need to ask for help immediately. And it, it's not like I'm gonna wait until the next test. I'm gonna wait two weeks. It's shooting your professor off an email and saying, I'm struggling, can you help me out? If they don't respond to your email, calling them during your office hours, their office hours. If they still don't, then we then we look at what else can we do. When you sometimes students say, I emailed my professor, I haven't heard back in two weeks. Well, now you're two weeks farther behind. And in high school, that's hard sometimes to make up. Two weeks in college can be a lot of content. So making sure you're asking for help and you have a plan that if I start struggling, this is what I'm gonna do. And if you're really lost and like, what in the world do you do? Come and talk to Miss Meeks or myself, or okay? We will problem solve, but it's still gonna be the, on you to make sure you're doing it because it's, it's PSEO and it's, it's the student's responsibility, okay? Um, making sure that dropping the class is gonna be your last resort, okay? There are times where dropping the class is the best thing to do, okay? There are a few times, but it should be the very last um, resort for you to do. So, My turn, oh, one other thing. When students take classes, and this is going a little bit ahead, the syllabus is everything, okay? The syllabus is something you'll get the first day of school if you post on the website. Whatever the syllabus says, that is like law. That is how it is, and there's no debate on that kind of stuff because the professor will come back to that. So making sure that you take the time to read the syllabus is going to be super, super important that you don't just kind of browse through it. You make sure you understand it. I also always tell students, save your syllabus because if you ever have an issue with transferring a class, you can always appeal and say, here's my syllabus for the class. I think I should get credit for it because I, it should count towards that um, college credit or for that, fill that category. And that's a way for you to appeal. But if you don't have your syllabus, they're gonna say, what'd you learn? And you're like, English, I wrote papers. You know what I mean? Like you wanna make sure you have backing behind you, okay? Okay, so if you decide, if, if you go over the options, you realize this is for me, I'm mature enough to handle this, I can do it, then the next steps start, which is making a decision. Uh, there is a list of schools on the MDE's website, Minnesota Department of Education. Waiting for it. And these are all of the participating institutions that offer PSEO in Minnesota. You have to take, you have to go to a college in Minnesota, but you can go to any, I mean, we have students taking a class in Vermilion, Winona, um, anywhere that you can find a class that you wanna take and they have an option. I, it wouldn't work to go to an in-person class if you're attending Bemidji State University, right? Probably wouldn't work to drive up there. So as long as it's an online class that you can find. So you can check that out. Once again, this slide will be available on our website, so as well as all of the links. Some colleges that don't, 
on a list don't offer 10th grade PSEO courses though. Mm. That's a list of all the ones that offer all of them, but not all of those schools offer 10th grade classes. Good point. So that is deciding on what school to do. And that, that's kind of tough because there's so many schools. Uh, that's why down below, I'm just going to kind of skip all over the place here. Down below, we listed the popular college choices for our students. MSU Mankato, South Central, and Riverland are by far the most popular schools that we have students taking classes from. Bethany Lutheran, we had a couple last year. I think we have a couple from Winona this year. Northwestern College in St. Paul, I have to warn you, it's a good option. We have a lot of students struggle with that, that college doing PSEO. I don't know why. Um, it doesn't mean you shouldn't look at it, but for some reason, we just have quite a few students struggling with their online PSEO program. Um, so that's just for you to keep in mind, but it's, it, they have a strictly online PSEO program. So that's why our students generally like to take it. And they offer a chemistry course where they mail you all of the lab stuff. So I think that's why it attracts students, but we've just seen quite a few students struggle. If you've taken the ACT and you got, if you're a senior or 21 or above, junior 24 or above, then you can send your scores to them. If you do need to take the AccuPlacer, that's a, that's a, oh, that's a long story to describe that test. I'll just say that Mr. Marlin and I can give that to you. Yep. So if you need that for uh, either a prerequisite for a class, some classes you need to qualify in order to take it at the college by getting a certain AccuPlacer score or having a certain GPA. Um, but if you need to, we can give it to you. You just need to ask us ahead of time before you need it. So then after you decide which school, and by the way, you can apply to multiple schools and you can attend multiple schools at once for PSEO. I have a student right now doing PSEO from MSU, Riverland, and U of M. I don't know how she keeps it straight, but she does. So you can apply to multiple colleges, but the next step would be to apply to the college. <coughs> it's just like a regular college application. Uh, most of the ones around us, like the MSU South Central Riverland, are pretty easy, and they all use the same application. So uh, your answers are saved in there. After you do the first college, then the next one that you go to within the Minnesota State System would just save that information. But obviously not all schools are in the same system. So you would apply, um, you can access your transcript on Infinite Campus under reports if you need anything specific about the courses you've taken or your current GPA. And once you apply, you need to let us know so we can send your transcript. Actually, that's on the next page. I'm just going to go to that. <laughs> Some colleges do have priority deadlines, so that would be something to definitely check on the website, too. OK, so the next step, and this is how we know that you've applied to the college. We need, if you are a new PSEO student, we need to have our Wasika High School, so it's the sheet of paper with a blue J on top. And if you didn't get resources, they're right up here. This is our Wasika High School PSEO contract. This lays out what the student is in charge of for doing PSEO and the expectations that we expect them to, to pay attention to. And we need this signed by a student and a parent or guardian. You only ever need to fill this out one time, but if like we like you to keep a copy of this as well because this is you saying you understand the guidelines that we have in place for PSEO. The next one, and this one is needed every single semester that you do college before every, like right now we are getting these in like mad because second semester is about to start. This is the Minnesota Department of, of Education PSEO enrollment form. So you fill out the top part, which is very easy. It's basically your address and a signature. If your student is 18, they can sign for themselves. Then we fill out the bottom part and then we send it to the college. The college fills out the third part, then they send it to the state. So we need a different one of these for every college you're applying to. If you apply to five schools for PSEO, and the reason, by the way, that Okay, finish my sentence. 
you apply to five schools for PSEO, we need five of these. And under where it says post-secondary institution this term, that's where you would write the five different college names on five sheets of paper. Why would people apply to five different colleges? First of all, because the courses that PSEO students take tend to fill up at the college quite quickly. Composition is a course that every college student is required to have. So if you want to take composition to cover your English credit, those fill up fairly fast. And sometimes there's multiple different options, multiple classes that you might want from each college. And so applying to multiple colleges opens up your, um, your ability to take different classes, especially if a class fills up before you get to sign up for it. Because PSEL students get the bottom of the barrel. They get to register for classes after all of the students on campus have registered for them. So uh, when we send this in to the college, we also send your transcript. When you fill out the application online, it'll say to tell your school to send the transcript. We automatically send it when we send in the MDE form to your college. Okay, after that, it's a waiting game. They email students with their decisions. And so whatever email you use in the application is what you should be checking. Also, parents should not be doing the application for students. If a student is mature enough to go to college, advocate for themselves, take a college class, they should be the ones filling out the application with the help of parents, but the parent should not be going in and doing the application for the students, which also brings me to the fact that the parents should not have their phone number and email listed on the college application because it's for the student. So the student, whatever email that they put in, then they need to make sure that they're checking their email because they will get an email notification if they're accepted or not accepted for PSEO. And then they'll also, the next steps after that, after you're accepted, would be to sign up for an orientation time. A lot of those after COVID are online. Some colleges are doing them in person. So you would have to check your email to make sure that you are aware of how orientation works. You will not be able to register for classes until you finish orientation. Once you finish orientation, you'll work with a college admissions counselor and or with us to figure out what classes you want to sign up for. And then you get your books, all of that. Then you send your PSEO schedule to your academic counselor. So students with the last name A through L to me, M through Z to him. Then we take you out of classes here at the high school. You cannot have a full load at the high school, even a study hall in your schedule if you're doing PSEO. Actually, on here on the bottom, it says students may not enroll in PSEO courses in addition to a full high school class load. <coughs> so we are signing a form that is going to the state saying that you will have an open hour in your schedule. So once you send us your schedule, let's say you're taking World Civilization 1500 to present at MSU. That's a popular one instead of taking world history. And then let's say you're taking composition one. We are going to keep you in those classes here until we get your PSEO schedule. Then we have confirmation that you don't need to be in world history and English here, and we take you out of it for the year. Uh, if it's an uh, elective class you're taking at the college, intro to psychology has been a popular one lately, then we just take you out of some elective hours here to make sure that you have that open in your schedule. Any questions about just the next steps and how they work? or you can ask afterwards, okay? I recommend using your personal email yeah. um, when you're doing this. Sometimes uh, college emails get blocked by our, our system. So uh, I would hate for them to be sending all this information that you never get it because it was blocked by our system. And I do, oh, I have one very important point. Yeah, so. This has been a thorn in our side. You must, must, must check your email and read it. Um, we cannot stress how important that is. I have, last year I had a student come and ask me, they're like, I don't know what to do next. I pulled up their, the email that I asked them for the email that was sent. The second sentence told them their next step. And I was like, it's right here. So I read it for them. So we have to just stress that like, students will come to us and ask questions 90% of the time that college has already emailed them the answer. It's just that they don't read their emails. So 
once again, be mature enough to make sure that you are reading through all of the directions that are given to you um, because they answer all of their all of your questions essentially when they send out that initial email information. So read your emails and all communications, including the syllabus. Just a quick question. Yeah. So in that example, like if it's one or two classes, right? So then you would remove them from the class here. Does so then during the day, do they just go into like a study hall? Oh, that's a good. Let so me repeat an hour it. Yep. That, that would be allotted for their Yep. So the question is, what do we do with the open hours, essentially? Yep. And like, where do they go? Um, it's open campus for PSEL students. We can't keep them here. So students can leave campus um, without being called in or out. Or if they want to stay here, we don't put them in a study hall, but they the learning commons right over here has become the place for students to go. So they check in with Mrs. Strabi and then they work on PSEO when they're there. Or if you don't have, if PSEO is asynchronous, you can work on PSEO whenever. Once again, you're not a high school student taking that class. So if you know that you're not gonna get your homework done that night and you have that open hour during the day, use it to work on PSEO. If you wanna leave campus and go home and take out the dog, whatever, that's, that's an open hour in their schedule. Yep, so you have to be, be able to make the, the best decision for yourself. The one thing we will ask is please don't be coming and going all over the place. Oh yeah. And just making sure like, if you're gonna stay here, you stay in the learning commons. Not very often, we've had a few students decide they're just gonna do whatever they want. And then usually our, our Dean talks to them and says, we have to make good choices here. Yep. Um, so wandering, just, wandering students will end up having a principal or the dean talking to them. Or please don't go get McDonald's for all your friends or something like that. You know. But um, too. okay. So uh, if you have any questions about like the workload and stuff like that, uh, Miss Meeks and I could talk through that. And, like, are you going to get yourself in over your head? I'm usually very vocal with students on any any concerns I have if I feel like they could get in their over their head. Not because I'm trying to say that they're not smart, but I'm just a very upfront person and I want them to know what they're getting themselves into so they don't later on go, come back and go, I wish someone would have told me this, okay? Um, so next steps, you've registered for the class and everything. Spring semester is a, a little different. So if you're not taking any PSEO classes um, right now, but you are in the spring, legally we have to keep you in a full load of, a, of classes, high school classes, until your PSEO classes start. It's, otherwise, some students say, if I wanna go full-time PSEO in the spring, then they don't just get a month off in December and say, I don't have to go to school, right? So what we would do is, depending on how many classes you're taking, we would just put you in seven classes or six classes at the high school, and then once PSEO starts up, then we would drop them and you would get a partial credit for whatever you're taking at the high school, okay? It's a little complicated for students only doing spring, um, but we'll kind of walk you through that. Um, just want to make sure people know they don't get all of December off. Okay. Um, deadlines. So Ms. Meek said some of the colleges have deadlines for when they want, um, all the PSEO stuff in. Some have rolling deadlines or open it, open deadline, open admission. Um, we asked by December 2nd to let us know because, uh, second trimester starts the week after that. So we want time to make sure we have everything ready for you to go before break. We also want to make sure we have your schedule figured out for second trimester. Okay. So um, that gives you just under a month to, to get all this kind of stuff done. Um, but please, if you have questions about any of this kind of stuff, let us know. So December 2nd, keep that in mind. Um, so here's our contact information. Um, just a reminder, all this information is on our counseling center website. Um, so you can always refer back, um, all the paper, all the paperwork and everything like that is on there as well. Oh, and if you grabbed the Riverland planning form, a couple colleges require more than just the PSEO statement. Riverland, for example, requires students to talk to us about a planning form. So if you pick that up tonight, that is not going to be required for anyone unless you go to P Riverland. That's only Riverland. Any questions? ACT. Mm -hmm. well, like, 
when I went to school, way back when, um, I know that we had like test dates here at school. So are there test dates? We do not offer national testing dates. A lot of schools around us do. So national testing dates are Saturday test dates when the ACT has really always been given on Saturdays. The ACT was turned into a state test five, six-ish years ago. So we offer it to only juniors. It's a state test for juniors uh, every spring. This year for juniors, they'll be taking it on April 5th. We can't open it up to other grade levels um, just because of how it works as a state test. So the next ACT national test February. is February 12th, whatever. Something like that. Yeah, February 12th-ish, whatever Saturday that is. Um, there we go. It's, that's also on our website. We're trying to get people to look at our website for answers because we've been, he especially has been working really hard on it. So you go to act.com or org, org act.org uh, to sign up for the ACT. But if you can't get that done, you hope that you qualify with your GPA or your class rank. We technically got rid of class rank, but we can use it when it gets into PSEO or if it helps you to get into PSEO. Uh, also, we could give the Accuplacer if the college will take that as a score instead. If not, you can take it and then look at doing PSEO next year. What is the deadline or time frame for fall enrollment then? For fall enrollment, we'll just have the end of the school year is when we'll ask for you to fill this stuff out. We'll have another meeting in March-ish to talk about that, but you'll probably be the end of the school year for us. And then the colleges usually, do, some will do enrollment, um, register students before school gets out. At MSU and some a lot of the four-year colleges, you won't might not register until August. So for it classes. gets to, for classes for college classes. So it gets to be a little hairy sometimes, and you're trying to figure out what you're going to do. Um, but you'll have we'll we'll get into that more. Yeah, and we don't work in the summer. So if a student comes in January or June seventeenth with paperwork, we're not here to take care of it. Which is why we have a very strict deadline for the for fall semester at the end of our current school year. That's a very strict deadline. So then if you were to do it in the uh, next year, once you're registered, you'd send it to us. And then when we come back, when we come back early to do all of our scheduling, that's when we would start removing students from their uh, class from their schedule and all that kind of stuff. And stuff. helping with figuring out yeah. classes, all of that. But that's also why we have the course equivalency online. So if it's July and you or your student is trying to register for classes and we're not available, that at least you have something to go off of to talk to a college counselor about. Any other questions? These are great. Yeah, they are. No? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll stop the recording. And then if you have any other questions, feel free to come up yeah. and, and talk.